What is going on unconventional fam? I hope you guys are doing awesome today. Today's going to be a super sick video because it's one of the first times I have done a video based on a ton of questions that I've got. In this video, if you have ever had the interest of keeping wild fish and there was just some things that you didn't know and you weren't sure of, I'm probably going to answer those questions in this video today. Do make sure you smash that like button, visit Unconventional Aquatics on Instagram to catch the weekly live streams. And guys, before we take a swan dive into this sick video, I got some questions for you. How many of you guys keep wild fish? How many of you guys have kept wild fish? What was your experience? Did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? Did you succeed? Did you fail? Have you kept wild fish? What have you kept? Let me know, I'd love to hear it. Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do here is take you on a little bit of a tour. If you're new to the channel, my name is Anthony. Thank you so much for joining. On my channel, I focus on keeping wild fish, ponds, exotic fish, large fish, um, pretty much whatever. In this 1100 gallon pool pond, we have two largemouth bass. You can see one swimming back there and he's just swimming next to his buddy. We have a six pounder and a 6.6 .6 pounder. Also back there on the corner, we have a bullhead catfish along with a few other smaller largemouth bass, crappie, bluegill, and green sunfish. We have a whole lot of cool stuff in this 1100 gallon pond. So guys, throughout this video, you are going to see some underwater footage that I captured today for you guys from the 1100 gallon monster fish pond, as well as the 200 gallon uh, wooden fish pond that's in my garage, all of which contain completely wild caught fish. Throughout this video, you're gonna see me look down at my handy dandy iPhone to read some of the questions that you guys sent in. So guys, getting right into the first question, which is the perfect first question reads, I wanna get into keeping wild fish, but I am not sure if keeping wild fish is legal in my area, what do I do? So guys, it's actually pretty, pretty simple to find out if game fish are legal to keep in your area. The easiest way to find out, I'm gonna give you two ways to find out. Go on the, the Fish and Games website for wherever you live, check out the Fish and Games, see if they have the regulations posted. If not, give them a call. Your second easiest option is visiting your local fish store, which are usually very, very knowledgeable on the laws in your area that regard keeping game fish, such as largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, spotted bass, whatever, bluegill, whatever it may be. So make sure before you ever even think about setting up a tank like this to keep wild fish that you know the legalities because you do not want the guys with the guns and the handcuffs showing up at your front door ready to give you a fat fine or put the cuffs on your wrist. Question number two, Unconventional Aquatics, I love your channel. Will you marry me? You have to talk to Miss Unconventional about that one. <laughs> oh, but seriously guys. Unconventional Aquatics, I love your channel. How do you find so many ponds to catch fish at? So guys, this is what I do. It's actually, it's your best bet. You go right here on your smartphone. Most people have a smartphone. Let me get this in focus. Can I get this in focus on my son's games? Google Earth, guys, download the Google Earth app. Type your address in, okay, where you live. And I can show you around here. I have, just by simply typing in my address within a two mile radius, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty ponds, guys. Twenty ponds within a two mile radius to also keep you out of jail or getting yelled at. If the pond is fenced in, I usually don't touch it. Now, if there's like, say, a gate on it that doesn't have a lock and it looks like it'll hold a lot of fish. Sometimes I'll take my chances if it has no, no trespassing or no, no fishing sign on it. And if there's a no trespassing sign or a no fishing sign, guys, I do not touch it regardless of how many awesome fish probably lie within that pond. Third point, make sure you have a fishing license, guys. Make sure you have a fishing license. We've hit a lot of key points here and we wanna keep this basic, but we don't wanna get wrapped around the axle because it really is just super, super simple. You, got, you know the fish that you wanna keep and you know they're legal in your area. You are licensed to catch these fish. Make sure you have a fishing license. You know where you're gonna get them. Hopefully you have some places close by. If not, we'll go into you know how to transport these fish and keep them alive, how to actually get the fish. So you guys have seen me catch fish 
three different ways on my channel. I cast net, I trap, and I fish with a rod and reel because I'm just a huge fisherman. That's one of my favorite pastimes. And usually when I'm not making a video, I'm fishing. Go get those traps, check them often. It's all part of the game, but it's super, super fun. The whole experience of keeping wild fish, catching them yourself, not paying a dime for the fish is just awesome. So luckily for me guys, I live within two miles of 20 ponds. So for me, I could honestly take a container, plop a fish in it, drive it home, acclimate it, and that be done. But I still practice safe transportation of fish. I bring battery powered bubblers or stone. I just run an air stone just to break up, make that surface agitation, keep that oxygen rich water so your fish are comfortable. And you put that container in your vehicle and drive home. Remember that there's a fish in a bucket in the back of your truck or car or whatever it is when you are driving. So make sure you're driving smart too. So that way your fish is alive when it gets home. So when it gets home, you've probably seen a ton of videos on YouTube of wild fish getting taken and just dumped right into somebody's pond or tank. Look guys, a lot of these fish are extremely hardy. They come from very, very rough conditions. But in my personal opinion, I believe in safe fish keeping and fish keeping practices. So I acclimate just like I would do any other fish. So guys, acclimation, 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 make that transition smooth for those fish because believe it or not, regardless of what a lot of people think, you are majority of the time doing a lot of good for that fish, especially if you're catching them in the conditions that I'm catching them in, which are nasty, disgusting community drainage ponds. On to another actual question here. What do I feed my wild fish? Do they transition off of eating wild food to eating um, regular food easily? And the answer is yes and no. That's a complicated question. It just depends on the fish. This was my easiest guys that I have ever transitioned before from eating wild food to eating tilapia and shrimp. What I did to achieve that is simply the starve out method, okay? Starving out the fish for a couple of days, not feeding them for a couple of days, get them really, really hungry and to the point where they're like, okay, I don't care what hits the water, I'm just gonna eat it. And essentially that's what happens. You'll throw, you know, I throw tilapia and shrimp, fresh tilapia and shrimp in there, they tear it up. I don't feed them live food anymore unless I'm giving them like some kind of treat on an occasion. But these guys are really too small, except for the bluegill, to be getting any oddball treats. Sometimes I'll throw some snails in there, some little tiny wild caught snails and that'll be that. By now, you know pretty much everything to go catch your first wild fish, bring him home and get him in the aquarium. Now there's a couple more very, very crucial, important points you need to know. Know the fish and know how big they're gonna get. That bluegill in there, guys, bluegill get huge. North Carolina is home to some of the biggest bluegill in the entire world. All right, guys, so now we're down to the last and final question here. It involves tank maintenance with wild fish. So. Here's what I do, and there's no science behind this whatsoever, guys. This is just my opinion, it's what works for me, and it's it's kind of what I believe. You guys have seen the conditions that I catch these fish out of. Disgusting, disgusting conditions. My phone's ringing. All right, guys, phone call is done. Sorry, I'm trying to tame the mane here. Keep it back, but it's just not cooperating. So, water, maintenance, tank maintenance, pond maintenance, when it comes to these wild caught fish, here is my belief. You've seen where I've caught them from. Very, very um, S-H-I-T-T-Y conditions. Therefore, when it comes to water changes, I break them in very, very slowly. Okay, I start out with like a 10% the first week. Then maybe the second week, I'll move up to like a 20%. There, you know, and I don't really go anything over about 30 to 40% on the wild tanks except for the 125 that has bigger fish and uh, a heavier bio load. That's kind of my thing that I go with and that's what works for me. Um, and everything's done just fine. So that's the way I look at it, guys. So think now, you guys should be pretty comfortable that have had the thought to keep wild fish, comfortable to go out and catch your first wild fish and set it up. Um, guys, I use a lot of natural stuff, like in this tank behind me, all those twigs are all waterlogged, submerged twigs pulled out of the pond. But it's super fun keeping, collecting wild fish, keeping them, because honestly, you're not paying for the fish, okay? You're just taking your time to go catch them. Super personable. These wild fish are more personable than any other aquarium fish that I have ever bought in 
hands down. It is super fun, and that's why I enjoy it so much. Wild fish is not gonna take over my hobby or my channel. That's just one of the things I love. I will still always focus on my wild, exotic, and big fish. That'll always be my thing. That is what I enjoy, and that is the most important thing to remember, guys. Make sure you're doing what you enjoy. So I appreciate you watching, guys. Check out Instagram so you don't miss the live streams where we're just hanging out and chatting with each other and having a good time. Appreciate you guys watching. If you have any more questions, you know where to find me, and um, I will see you on the next video.